Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I thought I'd do a fountain pen showdown. The two pens I'm going to be taking a look at. The first one is by Moonman. This is the Moonman M800, and this is in the amber color. Yes, I know it's a heavily inspired pen, but it's still nice. And this one has a Bock nib in it. The pen, I'm going to shoot it out. You may have just had a quick sneak peek in my hand. This is the Leonardo Memento Magico. Virtually identical to the Leonardo Memento Zero. But I thought, let's give this one a go, the Magico. Very, very similar shape. So what we're going to do is take a look at the pens against each other. We'll do some weights and measures. We'll do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts and I'll give these pens some stars. Welcome down to the mat. So here we've got our two pens. We've got the Leonardo Memento Magica. This is in this glorious meal or honey colour. Slowly turn that around. Love the way this plays with the light. And we're going to be comparing that with the Moon Man M800. This is in the amber colour. Again, I'm just turning it around for you there ever so slightly. I actually like the look of both pens. We're not going to go into too much detail on the bodies. I do that in my other videos, but we'll just talk about some of the similarities and also some of the differences. So if we take a look at the bodies here, put them next to each other just for a second. The Magica ever so slightly longer. Not by a lot, but just a little bit. The colouring's very similar. One of the things that disappoints me with this M800. I like the colouring. You know, look there, we've got this gorgeous Chateauensee coming through. Trouble is that Chateauensee only happens in that one place, so it's not got a lot of consistency to it. You're paying a lot less for it, so you expect that. Whereas the colouring here on the Magica, you know, that's going all the way around the pen. The caps, they come off and there's about one turn there. Let me just do that again for you. There's one turn, literally one turn and a teeny little bit. With the M800, we've got one turn. We've got about just over one and a quarter turns for them to come off. That reveals these two nibs. Let's take a closer look at the nibs. With the Leonardo, this is, I believe it's a Yoho nib, number six size. Very simple, isn't it? You know, it's all in this gold colour and all we've got engraved on there is the Leonardo logo. Underneath that, we've got Leonardo. Then we've got Italy. On the side, we do have Beef Abroad. With the M800, this one is a Bock nib. With this particular pen, you can order it with either a Moonman nib or with a Bock nib. You do pay extra for the Bock nib. So I do have examples of both. The nib's quite nice. One of the downsides, and this is one of my issues with a lot of Chinese pens, it only comes in fine, so there isn't that range of nib choice that you get with the Leonardo. I do like the two-tone effect on this. I like nibs that have got a two-tone effect. So on here, we've got that silver-colored border. Then we go into a decorative border on the gold-colored part. We've got a logo on there, and then underneath that, we've got Bock. It's a nice nib. When we come to our writing, we'll see it writes quite nicely as well. Let's compare the sections. So with the sections on the M800, we've got the Leonardo style section there. I really like this. It's nice and comfy. I hold my pens at the bottom, so it just guides my fingers down. And as you can see, the way it rests, it's so comfy for me to use. With the Magico, it's gone away from that Leonardo style section. It's gone to more of a standard sized section. So it's round and it's got a lip at the bottom. I don't find this as comfortable to use as I do with the old Leonardo sections. So like the one on my Memento Zero Grande, love that. Again, it's nice and comfortable. I mean, this is functional. It works, it does what it says. Whilst we've got the cap off, We'll take here, this is a piston filler on the Magico. So there's a piston mechanism right at the end. We've got a very generous ink window. I like this ink window. I think it looks nice. 
especially when you can see the ink in there. I've got an orange ink in there and I love the way that colour plays. Let's pop the cap on that for now. With the M800, this is a cartridge converter. So take that off, there's the converter. Again, got a reddish type ink in there, if I can get the ink to go down. There we go. I don't like seeing it up the top here, I like to see the ink down the bottom. And I'm being very, very picky. All metal fittings, not even something you would think about eyedropping. Let's pop that one back together. Other main difference, let's be honest, is the clip. I always find the clip on the Leonardo looks too small. The one on the M800 looks more balanced for the size of the pen. But when we look at this, it just looks too thin and too small. It looks out of proportion. Again, I know I'm being very picky here. So we've looked through the bodies. Let's do some size comparisons for these pens. First two pens I've brought in, my standard measures. We've got Pilot Metropolitan. We've got Alami Safari. More or less the same size for all of them. Let's take the caps off. With the caps off, the Metropolitan and the M800, to my eye, they look about the same size. And the Safari and the Leonardo, again, look about the same size. You can definitely though see there is a little bit of difference. The Metropolitan and the Safari, they're smaller nibs though. So if I line it up with the bottom of the section, we can start to see some differences in the size now. I'm not going to show these posted. What I'm going to do, I'm now going to show you the Leonardo Memento Magico compared with some pens of the same price range. Here we've got the Magico with some pens in that same price range. We've brought in a Tibaldi Bononia. This is in the Bora Bora pattern. That was 255 Australian dollars, made in Italy. The Leonardo Memento Magico, also made in Italy, in this meal pattern, that was 260 Australian dollars. And I've also brought in a Diplomat Aero, made in Germany, and that was 263 Australian dollars. Again, size-wise, let's be honest, not much in them. The only real big difference is the Magico, that's a piston filler. The other two pens are cartridge converters. I'll just pop the caps on these. With a cap on, we've got a little bit of a step here, haven't we? We've got large, we've got medium, and we've got small. All enjoyable pens. I use them all and posted. Love writing with them. Really nice, generous writers. Let's swap over and fetch in the M800 and some comparisons for that. The pens I've brought in. I've brought in the Pen BBS 456. This is in the cloud colour. That was 57 Australian dollars. The Moonman M800 with the Bock nib, that was 66 Australian dollars. I've also brought in a Narwhal Key West in the Isla Mirada colour, and that was 66 Australian dollars. All three pens made in China. The Narwhal, it's an American company, so it's made in China for an American company. But these other two are their Chinese companies. Let's pop the caps on. With the cap on, not really seeing much in the way of difference in length. The Pen BBS pen though, that one, that's a piston filler. The other two, cartridge converters. Let's get this out of the way and fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring. We'll start with the Leonardo. So the length of the pen, 14.5 centimetres. Unposted, that comes in at 13.1 centimetres. It will post, posts quite nicely. That comes in at 16.9 centimetres. I never do post it though, to me, posted feels too long. Widths, the width of the body, I measured it here just above the ink window, that was 1.31 centimetres. The width of the cap, that came in at 1.57 centimetres. The section goes from 1.12 up to 1.2 centimetres. We'll look now at the Moon Man. So with the Moon Man, that lightened up. So the total length comes in at 14.2 centimetres, so 0.3 centimetres shorter. Unposted, that comes in 
at 12.7 centimeters. So again, we're talking four millimeters shorter. Posted, again, it does post. Same as with the Leonardo, doesn't feel right to me. I always use these unposted. But posted comes in at 16.6 .6 centimeters, so three millimeters shorter. The width of the body is 1.4 centimeters at its widest. That's about one millimeter wider than with the Leonardo. And then a cap that comes in at 1.5 centimeters. So just a little bit narrower than what we're seeing with the Leonardo. Let's move this out of the way, fetching the scales of weighing. So here's the scales of weighing. Once again, the Leonardo, 25 grams, the cap, eight grams, the body, 18 grams. The Moon Man, the whole pen, 24 grams. So one gram less in weight, but there's less ink in here than there was in the Leonardo. Cap only, seven grams, body, 17 grams. Move this out of the way. We'll fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. This is Oxford optic paper. It's an A5 notebook made by black and red. Now, normally I go in ascending price order. Today, I'm doing everything in descending order. I thought let's mix it up a little tiny bit. So we'll do some writing. So we've got here a Leonardo. Memento. Magico. With a broad nib. Price wise, 260 Australian dollars. The ink is by Diamine and it's Blaze Orange. When I first put this ink in this pen, I really didn't think I'd like it, but I've got a bottle of the ink and I like the colour of the ink, but I thought with well, this pen might not look right, but once I see them together, I think it's a really nice combo. I really enjoy it. And it's a nice coloured ink to write with. I do find that it feels a little bit dry. And one of the things I do see with this is I do get a bit of railroading. And I think that might be more ink related than the pen. But because it's a piston filler, there's a lot of ink in here. I want to write it all out before I try a different colour. Drying times. Let's go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. Still fairly smudgy there. Let's do a two minute test. Yeah, two minutes and we're dry. I'm going to move the microphone down to the mat so you can hear the pen right. Line variation, so there's no pressure. There's adding some pressure. Let's do some S's. So what I'm doing is I'm doing alternate with pressure and without pressure. The only real difference I see is I'm getting this real road in when I'm adding a little bit of pressure onto it. Ink flow. Yeah, that's quite nice, quite enjoyable. So that's the Leonardo Memento Magico. Just move the page up ever so slightly. Now we'll do our writing for the Moon Man M800. So we've got a Moon Man M800. This is a Bock Fine. Straight away though, you can see a difference in the line. Price wise, this was 66 Australian dollars. The ink is by Robert Oster. And it's terracotta. Now I know ideal world, I should have the same ink in both pens, 
but I use these pens in my normal day-to-day -day writing. I'd get bored if they were all used in the same colour. I do like this terracotta colour, I've got to be honest, and I haven't tried it yet in the Magico. Maybe I need to, but I also like the blaze orange though in the Magico. Drying times, so we go immediate. That already looks a lot drier. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Smudging only a tiny little bit. We'll go for the one minute. Yeah, after a minute there, we're nice and dry. I'll move the mic to the paper so you can hear the pen writing. Now that definitely sounds louder than when I was writing with the Magico, you know, so it's got that more audible feedback to it. It also felt like the nib was stiffer and I don't know how best to describe it. It was as if I was fighting with the pen to get it to move along the page. It wasn't scratching, it wasn't dragging, it just felt like it wasn't smooth, the other one was. Line variation. No pressure. With some pressure. With pressure, no pressure. Little tiny difference, not that much. And here where I pushed a bit harder, we do get the railroad in. Ink flow. again keeps up nicely so let's zoom out get both these in line and then i'll give my thoughts and we'll give some scores to these pens i'm gonna fetch in both of these and we've got them there so we'll start with pen look with the leonardo absolutely love it we've got this constancy it's going all the way around we've got the different shades different turns we've got that bit of chatoyancy coming through there and no matter how you turn the pen, we're seeing that. Really pretty. With the Moonman M800 on Marjon, it depends what you want to call it today. Here we've got more of a plain body. Yes, we've got the amber, we've got the black stripes. But this Chateau seat only really happens in this one place. Yes, I know this is down to the way the acrylic it comes out. So I understand that. It's just, it's disappointed. I'd have loved to have seen this all the way around. So for pen looks, I've got to ding it for that. I'm going to give the Leonardo 9 out of 10, but the Moon Man, the M800, 8 out of 10. You know, it still looks nice. I'm not saying it doesn't. Build quality. To be honest, I've had no issues with the build quality. Had no problems with it. I've had this Leonardo now, must be getting close to 18 months to two years. No problems with it. Writes nicely, feels nice, comes apart nicely. I've got another three pens in this series. I've got all the four colours of the of the M800. I will be honest, it's one of my favourite pens. I had no issues with any of them. The Leonardo, again, good quality. You expect that from Leonardo. No problems with it. it looks nice. No problems with the filling mechanism. Starting to see that little bit of railroading, but I think that's more down to the ink than the actual pen. Build quality, both of them, 8 out of 10. Writing experience. Well, we saw no issues here, did we, today? We've got this nice line coming up here. Looks actually quite wet when you see it in my drying times. Get some nice shading coming through. Looks really nice. But the same can be said with the M800. Nice shading, nice line. Nice consistency. I just wish I could have got it with a broader nib. I really don't like the fine nibs. I'd have preferred, if not a broad, at least a medium. If I fetch in my Tomoe River, this is 52 GSM paper. So here we've got the Leonardo. You know, coming out here, it's grown on me. You know, when I first saw the colour, I've got to be honest, I was a bit, what the, when I saw it. But it's nice. I actually quite like it. 
nice and smooth, enjoyable to write with. Again, also tying out the railroading, which we're seeing a bit here, you know, especially down here on the J of enjoyable. And then at the bottom, we've got these other standard tests. Quite nice. Turn the page. Here we've got the M800. I don't know why my brain must have gone to sleep. I said it was Robert Oster Tranquility. It isn't. It's Robert Oster Terracotta. Tranquility is nowhere near this colour. You know, a coin here, one of my favourite pens, but would prefer that wider choice of nibs. It is a number six nib though, so it can be changed. And I have actually changed the nib in one of my other ones. In there, I've now got a broad euro nib. Oh, I love it really do but i thought for this comparison let's do as close as i can to what i bought don't use this ink often enough i really like terracotta i need to use it more often i think it's a really unusual color you know it's not orange not brown calling out here about the section as well but it looks really nice on there so for writing experience Again, I've got to be honest, they're both so nice. 8 out of 10. Ink flow. Bit of railroading when we were writing with the Memento Zero. Not really seeing it in my writing sample. And I find that this happens when I'm doing my normal writing as well. The first maybe paragraph, couple of paragraphs are fine. After that, that's when I start to see the railroading. So it's as if there's a problem with the ink getting through. Need to investigate that more. What I'm doing is I'm actually planning on using a purple ink in this next time. And a purple and orange. What a combination. Be interesting to see how that goes. With the Moon Man, you know, again, it's nice. No issues. Don't have hard starts or skips with either of them. I've no problems with ink flow on this. Ink flow, again, they both get 8 out of 10. Comfort. You know, I've already called out the section. I love the section on the M800. I think that's so much nicer than the section that we see here on the Leonardo now. I like the old style Leonardo sections. I think they're really comfortable. I do find with this with this lip, I mean, although it's nice and wide, if I'm doing a really long writing session, it can start to dig into my fingers. They both fit well into my hand. I use them both unposted. I enjoy using them. They're just nice. They're comfortable pens. They vanish when you're using them. So for comfort, I'm actually going to give these both 9 out of 10. Value for money. This is always the one which I struggle with when I'm trying to come up with scores. I like both these pens, but we've got to take into account the cost difference. The Moonman M800, 66 Australian dollars. The Leonardo Memento Magico, 260 Australian dollars. I can buy four of these Moonman pens for less than one Leonardo. Do I think the Leonardo is worth the money? Yes, I do. Do I think it's worth four times the money? I start to hum and ha then. Yes, the M800, you can say it's heavily inspired by the Leonardo. I don't want to say it's a copy, but it's definitely heavily inspired by the Leonardo Memento Zero. Remember, we've got here a Memento Magico, which is slightly different. But I've got to think, well, is it four times the value? So in terms for value for money, I've got to bear all this in mind. I'm going to give the Leonardo 8 out of 10. I truly do think it's worth the money. But because we're comparing these against each other, I'm going to give the Moonman M800 a 9 out of 10. I think for the value for what you get, the better value of the two. But the result of this is that for the Leonardo Memento Magico with Diamine Blaze Orange, we've got a total score of 8.33 out of 10. And for the Moonman or Marjon M800 with Robert Oster Terracotta, we've got 8.33 out of 10. So we've got a tie for these two pens. And I truly think that is a fair assessment. They are both really nice pens really enjoyable to use, and pens that I'm glad I've got in my collection. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I love both these pens. They both suit different needs. I know with the Magica, I've still got a little bit of work to do there on the nib. What are your experiences with these pens? Are there any pens like this that you're also interested in? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. 
Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.